Hello, and welcome to the 41st in an unknown number of podcasts. The poet John Donne famously wrote that no man is an island. And in these days of lockdown and shielding and isolation and social distancing, um, that may go at odds to his concept of humans as social beings. I have to say that whilst I've been producing these podcasts, um, there's a feeling that I've been working in splendid isolation. Um, so I'm very thankful today through uh, technology uh, to be able to welcome a guest to the podcast. So this is the first episode of KMAT's version of Desert Island Discs. Um, and today's castaway is Mr. Cole. And here he is working uh, from home. Uh, so I'm very pleased to welcome uh, to Desert Island Discs. It's Mr. Cole. Hi, and thanks for having me on the podcast today. I'm assuming that if I'm on a desert island, the sea is going to be blue, the sun's going to be white, and the sun's shining through the palm trees. I'm looking forward to seeing what questions you've got, Mr. Fung, so let's get started. Well, without further ado, here's the very first question on the very first episode of Desert Island Discs. What recordings would you choose to listen to? So what recordings would I listen to? Well, I like lots of different types of music and I wouldn't want to just have one particular type on my desert island for such a long time. So I'd like to listen to my recording as a radio station, but not just any radio station. This one, this is Pirate FM. This is the Cornish local radio station. So for those that don't know, I spend all my summer, as soon as we finish for the school holidays, uh, we pack up and we spend six weeks in Cornwall. And it's, it's a great time. We're driving down the A30, which is the main road into Cornwall. And it comes to a point where we can start to pick up Pirate FM. And it's an amazing radio station. It has so much variety, loads of different tunes that you always think, I've not heard that for ages. I love that song. So for me, I'd want to listen to Pirate FM on my desert island as if I was a pirate. Now would be the moment to uh, insert a pirate joke, I guess. Um, perhaps listeners at home will be doing that. Uh, if you have some really good pirate jokes, do please uh, send them in to me uh, via Twitter at Chief Vicar. Uh, moving on, Mr. Cole, the second question is which book would you read? Now, books. I don't really like fiction books, so the types of books I like to read are autobiographies, especially sports autobiographies. Now, this was one by Lance Armstrong um, at the peak of his career before um, all of the scandal that he was involved in. So I like books like this, really interesting books about uh, sports and sports people. I also like political autobiographies. And I read this book by Barack Obama all about his early time in politics. It was really interesting to find out how he'd become a politician. I also read a lot of uh, self-development books, all about becoming a better person and how you can change your life to be in a more positive frame of mind and see the results in your life. Anything by Jim Rohn is a really, really good read. However, the book I'm going to read next is this one, The Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. Two more inspirational people you couldn't come across. And to have a book written by these two people, I can only imagine it will be an amazing read. So if I'm going to take one book on my desert island, it's going to be this one, The Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. Now, that's a good choice. I have to say that the front cover alone makes me feel really happy. On to the next question now, Mr. Cole. Uh, what luxury item could you not live without? Now, luxury items. I don't really go in for lots of luxury items. So 
if I'm thinking about it, there's probably nothing that I couldn't live without if I was going to be stuck on my desert island. I'd be quite happy just on the desert island with the sun and the sea and the sand, and I'd be quite happy there. However, if I'm going to think about one thing that may be a luxury item that I might not be able to live without, it will be this, my Fitbit. Um, I have it on all the time. I'm always tracking how many steps I've done, how many calories I've burned. And I think if I'm on my desert island, I'd want to be keeping fit. I'd want to be uh, making sure that I was exercising on the island. So I think the thing that I would uh, use to help me do that would be my Fitbit. So I'm not sure it's a luxury item, but it's the one thing that I would say I'd like to keep with me on the desert island. So that's the thing I'm going to nominate for my luxury item. I know you're quite the keep fit fanatic, so that's a uh, that's a good choice. Um, now on to the next question. On your desert island, you have a large square dining uh, table. So who would you invite to dinner on your island? So who would I invite to my dinner on the desert island? Well, I can have three people. So the first person is this one. This is Rick Stein. He's one of the best chefs in the country. I've been in his restaurant in Padstow. He it serves amazing seafood. So I think that if I'm stuck on a desert island with, with fish all around, the best person to come to dinner is a person that can cook it. And I think that Rick Stein would be the perfect person to do that on the desert island. Second person, I reckon I'll be a bit bored by now on my desert island. Um, I'm going to be missing playing football. I'm going to need a goalkeeper to go and goal in between the palm trees. So, um, and I think David De Gea is the perfect person for that. Um, I can be taking shots. He can be saving it. And uh, it'd be somebody to uh, ease the boredom whilst on the desert island. Third person is this guy. Not just because I'm a computer scientist, but because he's a really, really interesting person. And I think the, uh, the conversation would be great. He would be interesting to know more about, know more about his projects that he's working on at the minute outside of computing. So he'd be the third person that I'd invite on my desert island. Well, I have to say those are inspired choices, Mr. Cole. Uh, somebody uh, that you can share your passion um, of computer science with, uh, somebody who's going to be able to cook all of the fish from the sea, and someone who's going to be happy playing in goal while you take pot shots at them. Great choices. Uh, now, on to your final question. Uh, since you are stranded on the desert island or stranded in your back garden, as it is right now, uh, what would be your message in a bottle? So my message in a bottle. If the sea looks like this and the sky looks like that, my message in the bottle would be leave me here. I'm quite happy. However, there would become a point when I'd want to uh, send a message home and let people know uh, what I was doing. I'd be sending a message probably to the current year 11s at school and saying that I hope they're not missing too much sitting their exams. I hope they're not missing school too much and they're making productive time um, working and getting ready for their next phase of school or at college or in uh, apprenticeships or whatever they're going to do. I might send a message to our current year sevens saying that I hope they're really busy working really hard and I'm looking forward to seeing them in a short amount of time in September when I'll be their head of year. So I'd say work hard, enjoy the summer and I'll see you all back at school as soon as we can. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Cole, and thank you for being uh, the first volunteer to be the castaway on um, Desert Island Discs. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed listening and I do hope you've enjoyed um, finding out a little bit more about Mr Cole. Um, if you have any suggestions who you'd like to hear on Desert Island Discs um, or if you've got any comments about today's uh, episode please do let me know. So via Twitter at Chief Vicar. 
I do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, until tomorrow, as always, be kind, take care, and stay safe.